Hey guys, Seventh here. Now today you're going to be watching some footage of Dying Light. Now before some of you get on to me about what a horrible parent I am for letting a 12 year old play Dying Light, listen up. I know my audience. And when I was 12 years old, I would have played games like this and you would have too. Don't be telling me that at the age of 12 you weren't watching Nightmare on Elm Street and Hellraiser and Friday the 13th and uh, anything else that had you know blood and boobs in it you know you were so don't try to play me like that he's a straight A student he's in the gifted program he's already in collegiate leadership courses and he reads at a collegiate level he watches horror movies he loves anime and he plays video games and if you've looked at his trophy score for a 12 year old he's quite good so cut him some slack okay folks Cut him some slack. Now, what I want to talk about today is the HoloLens. It seems like uh, there was a big stink about it as far as people were getting really excited about it and uh, just imagining the wonderful, wonderful gaming experiences that the HoloLens was going to bring to gaming. I will say that it is an impressive piece of technology, but I see it being catered more towards applications, design stuff, than I do gaming. I think it's going to be limited as to what it can bring to gaming. Now, why would you say, why would you think that I would say that? Well, let's look at history, shall we? There was this little thing that came out a few years ago called the Kinect. And can, everything was going to be better with Kinect. Kinect, 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 better with Kinect. In fact, in fact, uh, they even showed off this game called Milo, where you could sit and be a child predator in a virtual world. Isn't that lovely? But they showed off all these wonderful different things. Like they showed people playing Burnout Paradise with the Kinect. They showed uh, mock-ups of different types of games that you could play with it. But when it got right down to it, what kind of games did you really play? You know, where, uh, name off for me the best first-person shooters for the Kinect. You can't because there aren't any. Name off the best racers for the Kinect. You can't because they all sucked ass. All the sports games were kitty motion based crap. You know, so it, it, it event essentially there was a couple of ha of decent on rail type experiences where it was mostly horror based, but it was on rails. So it was like playing the Wii but without a Wiimote. And the rest of it was casual crap like dance simulators and that kind of shit. Right? Because there was only so much that you could do when you're standing directly in front of your TV and didn't have any way to control 3D motion in a 3D space. So, here comes HoloLens, right? And you've seen different demos. There's even a mock-up demo out there that's supposed to show what a first-person shooter would look like on the HoloLens. Let me call bullshit on that right now. And why? Well, let me ask you a question. What is the most popular aspect, as much as I hate to admit it, of first-person shooters? Online multiplayer deathmatch. Now, the thing about HoloLens, assuming that you have to be within a certain range of your Xbox One or your PC for it to work because I have I personally haven't read anything about it having uh, 3G or 4G technology in it where it could go anywhere like the Google Glass shit so assuming that you have to stay within a certain range of uh, your Xbox One <laughs> what are you la over there laughing about? is this funny to you? My wife, Jody Foster, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Stop doing that. It makes your boobs jiggle and it's distracting me. You keep that up and you're going to make me externalize my internalized mis uh, misogyny. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me cross my legs for a second here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now, let's say, for example, you've got this first-person shooter that comes out for the HoloLens, right? The HoloLens is not a virtual reality device, it's an augmented reality device, right? So it uh, overlays graphics on top of the environment that's already there. So you have to assume 
that unless you can take it out on the road and go out to some great big uh, high school football field or something where you have room to run around and look like an idiot fighting people that no one else can see, that you're going to be doing this from within your house. Now, if you're playing multiplayer against somebody, the only way that that would possibly work is that every single person who plays this HoloLens shooter, this hypothetical shooter, has the exact same house layout. Everyone would basically have to live in the same house so that it could overlay the same map. Why do, you, why do I say that? Well, let's say that you live, like me, in a two-story house, and you're playing one-on-one -on -one deathmatch against a guy who lives in a one-story ranch house. And he's chasing you through the house, and he's shooting at you, and you turn and you run up the stairs. He doesn't have stairs, so he just watched you run up invisible stairs and disappear into the ceiling, and there's no way for him to get to you. Do you get what I'm saying? If you don't have the same environment, the same exact 3D environment to overlay stuff, then the two different connect the, the two different players cannot possibly be synced because the environments are laid out differently you know the living room's in a different place the kitchen's in a different place one person has stairs one person don't how are you supposed to be able to play deathmatch like that when the environments are different you can't there, it's just not going to work and even if you could do a single player, you're, again, you're going to be limited to what's in your house. The only way first person would work would be as essentially you're still playing it with a controller and you're just projecting the first person shooter screen onto the wall like what they showed in the demo. So as far as first person shooters go, really the, the only conceivable application that I see for it is for, you know, college goers that are living in dorm rooms and can't handle the size of a TV, so they just project their first-person shooter game up onto the wall. Now, there is potential here, because one thing that they could do, I think it's risky, but one thing that they could do is they could use it to turn your own home into a first-person survival horror experience. Like, do you remember the, uh, the Silent Hill demo? that uh, that came out for the PS4 recently <laughs> that everyone was going nuts over the first person PT demo imagine that kind of stuff happening but it's happening in your actual house so you're walking around in your house and uh, you're walking towards your kitchen and some nasty fucking zombie or something comes around the corner and is walking towards you and then you can reach down and grab something in your real environment and use it to swing at them and do damage that could be potentially interesting. There's just one problem. The legal liabilities of it. I mean, think about it, folks. This device is something that's primarily going to be embraced by a casual market. We know this because that's a lot of the people that embrace the Wii. What happened when the Wii came out? You had people that were getting so focused on the experience that they were having that they would lose all cognizance of the environment around them. So they were swinging that Wiimote like mad, breaking their own kids' noses, knocking their own kids off their feet, knocking each other off their feet, smacking the shit out of each other, and look at how many, just in the first week, lost the grip of their Wiimote and smashed it right through the screen of their TV. Now imagine what could happen in a house where more than one person lives there, where you are running around you know, uh, swinging whatever you happen to have in your hand at zombies that are being generated in your environment. Just imagine, you know, you don't know that your 12-year-old kid has come up standing behind you and you take a big old uh, home run swing at one of these zombies and you end up popping your kid right in the forehead. Or better yet, you know, I guarantee that if, some, if they actually made a game like this and some company decided, you know what, it's worth the risk, uh, we're going to sell, this thing's going to sell like hotcakes. We're not going to worry about lawsuits. We're going to put it out. I guarantee you that within six months of it coming out, we would hear a story, a news story, about some dipshit that fell down the stairs and broke his neck trying to run away from a fake zombie in his house. I guarantee it. It sounds like it would be a hell of a, a fun, uh, fun experience. Sorry, my throat. 
caught up on me there. It would be a hell of a fun experience, but I don't think any company would be dumb enough to take that kind of a legal risk. I just don't. So that one kind of goes out the door, too. So that leaves you with experiences like... Uh, I think it would be good for stuff like Civilization and Age of Empires where the whole world map is laid out on the ground and you're able to move the map around with your hand and, and place your troops and do all that kind of stuff. That I could see happening. Uh, games like that Eye of the Beholder that was for the PlayStation Eye for PS3. That would be a good type of experience. Anything that has an overworld view, where you can put the overworld down on the ground and control it that way. Even like a hack and slasher like uh, Diablo, having that down on the ground, where you can guide your guy through mazes and, and you know flip your fingers or whatever and cause them to attack stuff. Like maybe have a virtual mouse up on the screen that you can control him with. That I could see, but first person shooters, fuck no. Uh, racers, fuck no. It's going to have limited applications. However, all hope is not lost, Microsoft. Because Seventh is the idea man. And I'm going to help you out. You see, I've got an idea that is guaranteed to make HoloLens a success. And it will not only make HoloLens a success, but it will, I guarantee it, turn the Xbox One not only into an instant super success in the United States, but it will even, at long last, finally give you a real solid foothold in Japan. Are you ready? It's a little risky, but I promise this will work. Here's what you do. You go and... Uh, here's what you do, Microsoft. You go and you make contact with uh, some of the bigger adult sex toy companies. And what you're going to want to do is get a lot, get licensing for the from the Fleshlight Company and the company that makes those little uh, bullet remote-controlled vibrators that women, business women, put down in their panties so they can get off multiple times while they're sitting on the subway. And what you do there is you put in a Wi-Fi transmitter to them, along uh, and make sure that both of them have variable speed vibration controls, right? And you uh, test this out a little bit with uh, whoever's willing to volunteer with uh, games that use vibrations so that uh, just like certain things that happen in the game make your Xbox controller vibrate, these same things will make this Wi-Fi flashlight and bullet vibrate. And here's where the fun part comes in. I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, he's talking about going to Vivid and all these adult movie companies and setting them up to watch porn and, and while these things essentially masturbate them. No! Because that's not real interaction. And that's also ignoring your audience. And if there's one thing that I've learned over my years and years on the internet, it's that there's no such thing as gamers just watching normal porn. Here's what I'm suggesting. And it says it all just in the title of the game. Hollow Hentai for HoloLens. Just think about this. Think about the massive, million-strong otaku audience in Japan. Think about the massive, million-strong male and female, gay and straight, trans, whatever you can imagine, weeboo audience of the United States. The United States otakus. What do they watch? What do they post constantly on Twitter? What do they are endlessly talking about fapping to on Twitter? And talking about their waifus and their husbandos. Hentai. So imagine having a device that you can hook up to your junk or put in your junk while walking around in your house and having all of your favorite hentai porn characters interacting with you in a real-time environment. People would have so much spooge and female spooge on the ground they'd have to buy rain galoshes. Do you see what I'm getting at here? This is what will sell Xbox One to the Japanese. They'll never leave their house again. 
because you are giving these people and the people in the United States a golden opportunity. The opportunity to suck, fuck, fondle, and cornhole every an male anime character, female anime character, and tentacle monster that they've ever fapped to. That's going to sell the system, that'll sell the hollow lens, and it'll sell the game. And here's the best part. All of you that, f that actually watch this stuff, <clears throat> Miss Wife, all of you that actually watch this stuff know that they're very prolific about their volume of output in Japan. There's new hentai and uh, harem shows coming out every month. Right? And they pay top dollar for those DVD and Blu-ray box sets over there. Spend massive amounts of money on this stuff. Not to mention the dating sims that they play over there. So, you mix the dating sim in with uh, the ability to, uh, you know, interact with in a meaningful way. And then, you get a licensing agreement with all these anime companies so that once a month they pay full retail price, another $59.99, and they get all of these anime characters that just came out on DVD that they've been fapping to for the last 30 days. Well, here's a new cast of anime characters for the new shows, and now they've got an entire new cast to fap to, and they will pay full retail price for every DLC pack. You'll be getting $59.95 a month from millions of perverts. It's destined to succeed. You don't even have to call it hollow hentai. You can call it hentai lens. It's guaranteed to work. This is what will finally put the Xbox One way ahead of the PS4. It will sell in the millions. I guarantee it, folks. Anyway, that's my idea of Microsoft. You don't even have to pay me any kind of licensing or finding fee for this idea. I'm a nice guy. I'm about advancing the, uh, the whole market in general. I want to see gaming grow and succeed. This is a freebie from me to you. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about Nintendo and their uh, interesting policies concerning YouTube. Until then, I'll see y'all later. I've got to take the wife upstairs and internalize some misogyny, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, you laugh now. This is 7th.